dear goodness, this thing's so heavy. So, what I have here is a vintage 1950s reel-to-reel tape machine. We're gonna make a tube amp out of this. You see, if someone said, hey, wouldn't it be nice to own a 1950s tube amp? You'd say, sure, absolutely. But they'd be quite pricey. I got this thing for nothing. I think I paid like $30 for it. And it is full of deliciousness. There is a huge beefy power transformer in here. Output transformer, preamp tubes, power amp tubes, rectifier tubes, vintage caps and resistors, shielded wire. It is beautiful inside there. What I want to do is build a shop amp, an amp that will sit back here. And not just any amp, it's going to be a tube amp made from all parts from the 1950s. Once we get an idea of what the power transformer is like and what tubes are in here, then we can match it with the closest schematic of a guitar amp. So what we want to do is completely take this apart, desolder all the components, remove the tape portion, and then build the chassis up from scratch. Reuse the chassis, the tube sockets, the tubes, make it really truly an amp from the 50s. I just want to see what is possible with these old vintage reel-to-reel -reel players. I'm gonna just touch stuff. I'm not worried about there being any voltage in here. It hasn't been turned on in centuries. It's just gorgeous. There's so much beauty in here. But look at the layers. This layer here is all tape machine. Big old motors, huge gigantic motors here. There's two of them. Spindle here. So all this will be removed. This part is the amp chassis, so we can remove it here. So only thing we're gonna take is this bottom chassis, and all of this we're going to sell. A lot of really cool things going on in this amp. We have all these really amazing looking tubes in here, all made in the United States. The sockets are in great shape, so we're gonna reuse all of these. These are also riveted, so we'll have to pop the rivets. There are some beautiful shielded cables in here. This is a metal shielded cable here and here and here. Okay, so we want to definitely salvage these cables. And then of course we have all this perfect wire that we're going to totally reuse and salvage. See, this is already twisted for us, so we can use these for the heaters. All this cool mechanical action. The engineering that went into this is just nuts. More wire that we can use and salvage. Right, this is that pretty big power transformer here. Not as big as like a Hammond organ transformer, but this will be good enough to drive an amp. This is the output transformer here. This is actually really pretty. So this will go on our new amp. This will go on our new amp. The next stage is going to be to remove this amplifier section from the rest of the tape machine and then start desoldering everything. So we're going to desolder all the sockets. We just want to have plain sockets. Remove all the tubes, clean them up. Remove all the stuff so it's just a blank chassis with empty tube sockets. Then we can start building the amp from the ground up. So let's go ahead and start taking this apart.
So I finally landed on a layout that I like. So what I decided to do was move the tube sockets from here, popped the rivets, and I put them on top. So this is based off a Princeton amp. So this is just basically three tubes, uh, rectifier, preamp, and power amp. And what I did was I used existing holes everywhere I could so I wouldn't have to drill them. These were a pain to drill, but I was able to get through the drilling process just by using a really big step bit. So these big step bits. So sockets are going here, power transformers going here. Now, the existing filter caps were placed right in here and there's big holes there and I'm able to route the transformer wires into those holes. I'm using an existing hole for the fuse. I just enlarged it, it looked like this. And then you have these corner holes up here. I actually enlarged them quite a bit to put the switch here. A little bit awkward, but it's gonna work. So switch, fuse. I put a hole back here for the three prong. So flipped over, this is what it looks like. We have the three octal tube sockets, fuse and switch, and then this is the power transformer. So we have the black primaries, and we have the um, secondaries here, the 6.3 volts, and then we have the high voltage. Now, it's not finished, but I did wire the heaters for the tube sockets. I went with the multimeter as well, and I tested all the heater pins, and they're just getting the proper voltage. So originally I was gonna do point to point, and just do everything point to point, like I worked on the silver tone, because I really like that look, but it started to scare me. Having like the high voltage just out and about, this close to the chassis, super high voltage coming out, here, the DC voltage going to be plus. Like, it just scared me to have it so close to the chassis, and just have everything floating around. So I am gonna use this fiber board, which gives me um, a really nice surface to work with, and I can mount all my components on here, and then it looks nice and neat, and it's easy to troubleshoot.
So the really cool thing about these reel-to-reel -reel machines is they come in this amazing enclosure already. And this is real wood. It's not particle board, it's not MDF, it's not plywood. It's real solid wood. It's about 10 mil thick for this lid. The hinges here have this really cool pin system where you can slide this lid out just by scooching it over to the right. And so all I did was make a speaker hole and it looks really good on the other side here. So I went slightly under 11 inches for this diameter and I already put in some holes, one, two, three, four here on the sides. I picked up this. I just went on reverb and I picked up a used 8 ohm 12 inch speaker. It's branded as Fender Musical Instruments Special Design Speaker. So the really cool thing that I really was dying to use was the original hardware from the uh, reel to reel. So check this out. So this is the original gold brass colored hardware the reel to reel came with. And it's just got that amazing 50s patina already on there. Because this is a, basically a rear mounted speaker. So this would be at the front. You'd see this on the front and it looks so cool, but not long enough. So total drag because I really wanted to use or at least try to reuse every bit from the reel to reel. So now I'm at the point where I need to find a grill for this, right? So that's what it's gonna look like. And I need to have something to protect the cone. So obviously this is rear mounted, so I'm not gonna have anything on the top, but it's gonna be mounted underneath. So some kind of cloth underneath, then that, then some beautiful finishing washers and some bolts. And that's gonna be it for the cab part of this reel-to-reel -reel conversion. So all the wiring is complete 100%. So the first thing that you'll notice is that there's a whole bunch of crazy wires. There's a crisscross and hatching of wires, which you're not supposed to do, because that can cause all sorts of humming and hissing and problems and oscillation and motor boating. But I need a way to be able to troubleshoot this. I need to be able to see this. The beautiful thing about this big enclosure is that you can see everything. You can get your hands in here. Well, you don't want to touch anything, but you can get your hands in here. As opposed to a very small champ enclosure, which is really hard to troubleshoot because you have layers. Like in order to get to the turret board, you have to remove the light and remove the jacks. It's just a mess. It's not good for a beginner. If you're a beginner and you want to build an amp, get a big enclosure. I would recommend getting a Princeton or champ circuit and putting it in like a deluxe chassis just to have this type of room and access to troubleshoot. I have the input stage here, right? This black, green, and red wires going all the way across, crisscrossing, overlapping, all the way over here, the preamp section. So you shouldn't be doing it this way. Don't do it this way. And I think I'm gonna end up moving this once I say, okay, the circuit works, everything's great. I'm gonna move this turret board here. So I can't be the only one who thinks this is totally awesome. I'm geeking out over this. This is total nerd level stuff for me, and I don't, I don't know why people aren't more interested in this stuff. Like, yeah, okay, building guitars is great. You know, there's some geometry involved, but this is where the real geeky stuff happens, right here in tube amps. So to build the um, speaker cloth cover, I just used a canvas bag, like a grocery canvas bag that we all have thousands of. And I just cut a square out, stapled it on the inside, and then mounted the speakers. I'm using the original finishing washers from the reel-to-reel. -reel. But this is really cool, check this out. You can actually um, open this up, which is super neat. So I can unlatch this and then check that out. So I have that 12 inch speaker, I have it wired to the jack and that's the enclosure in there. So I can actually have it open back if I wanted to and I can troubleshoot. And that's basically the cab, which was, again, nothing, just putting a hole in there. Here's the chassis made out of copper. Super cool. So these are the original tubes. They're made in the USA. This is a G, that's an RCA. This one, I can't tell the brand, but it's an Hytron. It's just made in the USA. 1950s.
right, so everything works really well. It sounds so good. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Like, why aren't more people guitarists, guitar builders? Why aren't they buying these things? I paid $30 for this reel-to-reel. -reel, and I got an amp cab out of it, just to buy a speaker. I got a chassis, tubes, transformer, output transformer. You know what the cost is? of an amp kit, a tube amp kit. Go to Stumac, type in tube amp kit and see what the cost is. See what the cost is alone of just a power transformer. You're talking about about a hundred bucks. Output transformer, 80, 90 bucks. Tubes, a power tube, a preamp tube, a rectifier tube. These days, you're looking at several hundred dollars. And I got this for 30 bucks. Obviously I bought the speaker and I bought a handful of resistors and caps. It just, it boggles my mind that no one's doing this. This is a silver tone tape machine. You probably can't see it, I'm pointing over here. Yeah, in the corner. That's a silver tone tape machine I picked up for like $14. I picked up a vintage phonograph from like the late 40s. I got that for $8. I'm gonna build tube amps out of these things. I got free tubes. That thing right there is gonna be an awesome two watt tube amp. This is five watts. It is flipping loud. So I'm gonna wake up my neighbors just for you to show you the breakup on this amp. That's just my mic, so I'm gonna hook a cord over here. That's got some headroom there. Let's kick this up. Okay, that's enough. All right, that was way, way too loud for. A Sunday Easter morning at 8.23 a.m. All right, so go buy vintage reel-to-reel -reel players, convert them to tube amps. Thanks for watching and take it easy.